scan of the internet using the search term stem cell therapy immediately delivers more than 70 million hits. Stem cells have become such a hot topic in every kind of literature a media source imaginable. How can patients and their families know whether stem cells have any relevance at all for treatment of their disease, either now or in the future? What are the facts? What is fiction? People very often mix up adult and embryonic stem cells simply because are both called stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are still quite controversial because they are derived from leftover human IVF embryos. But they are also the most potent. They can become all cells of the body, a great asset because they can in principle be used to repair all organs. On the other hand, they are not yet safe for many applications because they can go quite uncontrollably into tumours if injected into the body. They have been approved for trials to treat spinal cord injuries in about 10 patients and age-related blindness or macular degeneration in other patients. But that's about it right now. On the other hand, a very unexpected breakthrough about five years ago gave major impulse to stem cell research. It turned out that skin cells could be converted into cells that seem very like embryonic stem cells without destroying embryos. Simply putting in some extra genes turned the skin cells into cells that could also become anything just like embryonic stem cells. We now do this in our laboratory. We quite routinely collect skin cells or even blood from patients induce these to become stem cells by adding four genes and then turn them into beating heart cells or nerve cells, liver cells, almost whatever we like. That means we can in principle make cells to match those of a patient for transplantation. It would however be really expensive to use your own reprogrammed personalised cells for therapy and it is rather unlikely to happen, although banks of cells might be made for therapy much like cord blood banks these days, where we now see the greatest potential of these reprogrammed cells when derived, for example, from patients with genetic forms of heart disease, in t is in testing drugs. In the case of heart cells from stem, the stem cells from, from the patient, and if we can find drugs to correct those symptoms, then we could give the same drug to patients with the same ailment. In addition, these stem cell derived human heart cells make it possible to investigate whether other drugs, not specifically meant for the heart, have negative side effects on the heart itself. This is sometimes a reason that new drugs are actually uh, fail safety tests and novel test methods might make it possible to introduce new drugs more safely and more quickly into the clinic. In addition, it could reduce the number of animals necessary for use for testing drugs. This way, testing drugs will not only be useful for heart disease, but also being developed for all kinds of tissues and cells derived from these induced pluripotent stem cells. Clinical trials in a dish instead of in patients. Much safer for therapy would be stem cells for in your own body. For treating blood disorders or skin burns, or other, in some cases repairing large gaps in bones, adult stem cells are already being used in the clinic. But this type of treatment with adult stem cells is still in its infancy, and it has developed a very worrying dark side. Commercial stem cell clinics are starting up all over the world, from Mexico and Costa Rica to India and Thailand. Until recently, even Germany was unable to prevent their sale of unproven and very expensive therapies to desperate patients and their families. But it needed the death of two patients to precipitate closing them down. We still get queries three or four times a month from people who consider these therapies for their own multiple sclerosis, their child with cerebral palsy, or their husband with chronic arthritis. In many cases, once presented with the facts, they decide not to go to these clinics, but not always, and we hope for them it does not go wrong and they are worse off than before. We recently wrote a book on stem cells called Stem Cells, Facts and Scientific Fiction to try and help patients, their families and their doctors understand what stem cells and what are and what they really can do. 
One of the co-authors of the book, Sir Ian Wilmot, who was leader of the team that cloned the first mammal, Dolly the sheep, like me, is also dedicated to bridging the gap between researchers and the general public. We also describe the pitfalls of the unwary for the unwary looking for desperately for a solution for their loved ones in treating a disease. We hope that the book provides a guide in searching through the 17 million hits.